Hi, and welcome to The Turbulent World, with me, James M. Dorsey, as your host. One would think that heart-wrenching images streaming out of the Gaza Strip suggest that Israel has Hamas over a barrel in stalled efforts to revive prisoner exchanges. Think again. Talks in the past week in Europe between senior guttery Israeli and U.S. officials and in Cairo, between Hamas, Palestine Islamic Jihad, the second most important Gazan group, and Egyptian intelligence, suggest otherwise. The talks stalled after Hamas insisted that it would not engage in prisoner exchange negotiations unless Israel halts its military operations and agrees to a ceasefire. U.S. President Joe Biden admitted as much declaring this week that there is no expectation at this point of a renewed prisoner exchange. Hamas derives its leverage from its ability to ignore Gazan voices, blaming it for the carnage its October 7 attack on Israel provoked, and its willingness to endure Israel's relentless indiscriminate bombing on the back of the Strip's population. To be fair, with Israel determined to continue the war for an extended period until it destroys Hamas, the United States' increasing criticism of Israel's conduct of the war and the international community's focus on getting humanitarian aid into Gaza, the group's strategy may prove the most effective. Working in Hamas's favor is the fact that Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is caught in a catch-22. Mr. Netanyahu cannot ignore mounting domestic pressure to prioritize the release of hostages kidnapped by Hamas on October 7, rather than the destruction of the group. At the same time, Mr. Netanyahu risks a breakup of his ultra-nationalist, ultra-conservative coalition, if he makes concessions to Hamas in negotiations. The Prime Minister fears that a breakup could accelerate his political demise, with a majority of Israelis blaming him for the intelligence and operational failures that enabled Hamas's October 7 attack, in which more than 1,100 people, a majority civilians, were killed. The risk of a breakup is enhanced by the fact that a majority of Israelis still in Hamas captivity are military personnel. Based on the template of past exchanges involving Israeli soldiers, Hamas and Islamic Jihad have demanded that all Palestinians imprisoned by Israel, estimated to be more than 7,000, be released in exchange for the remaining captives. That would hand Hamas a political victory. In 2011, Hamas freed Israeli soldier Gilad Shalit in exchange for 1,027 Palestinians. In 1984, Israel exchanged 4,500 Palestinians for six Israelis held in Lebanon by the Palestine Liberation Organization, or PLO. And two years later, 1,150 for three Israelis captured by the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine, General Command. An all-for-all deal would involve the controversial release of Palestinians convicted to long-term or life prison sentences on charges of murder. The deal would potentially strengthen Hamas's position in talks with Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas's Palestine Authority, about resolving their long-standing differences and forming a united front in preparation for the day guns fall silent in Gaza. In a concession to the United States and an effort to avoid administering post-war Gaza, Israel has hinted that it might drop its rejection of the Palestine Authority governing the Strip. Writing on the Arabic-language Elaf news website, National Security Advisor Tzahi Negbi acknowledged international pressure to turn Gaza over to the authority, 
We make it clear that the matter will require a fundamental reform of the Palestine Authority, Mr. Hanegbi said, adding that Israel is ready for this effort. Palestine Authority Prime Minister Mohammed Steyer has described Hamas as an integral part of the Palestinian political mosaic. He suggested the group could join the PLO if it accepted its commitments, including recognition of Israel. The talks have created a rift between some exile Hamas leaders who favor joining the PLO on its terms and Hamas's Gaza leadership, which is focused on a victory of sorts by surviving the Gaza war and ensuring Israel's international standing remains severely damaged. Hardline Israeli opponents of an all-for-all deal note that among the prisoners released in exchange for Mr. Shalit was Hamas's Gaza leader, Yahya Sinwar. Israel accuses Mr. Sinwar of masterminding the October 7 attack. He tops Israel's most wanted list. Addressing a recent security cabinet meeting, Chief of Staff Herzl Halevi argued that it took the U.S. military 10 years to locate and kill Osama bin Laden. Critics note that negotiations rather than military operations have led so far to hostage release. Hamas and Islamic Jihad last month exchanged more than 100 captives, primarily women and children, for 240 Palestinians in Israeli prisons. This was during a Gata-negotiated week-long truce. Israel's military campaign has produced primarily dead hostages, killed in bombings and fighting, and only one captive liberated alive. Pressure on Mr. Netanyahu mounted after Israeli soldiers last week killed three bare-breasted male hostages, waving a white flag as they escaped Hamas captivity. Hamas and Islamic Jihad have sought to step up the pressure with the release of videos of three more hostages allegedly killed in the fighting and several elderly captives. To avoid the pitfalls of a swap involving Israeli military personnel, Israel so far unsuccessfully wants to limit the next round of exchanges to the release of 40 hostages, 19 women and two children still in captivity, as well as older men in need of medical care during a one-week truce. A limited exchange would allow Mr. Netanyahu to claim he is doing everything possible to get hostages released. It would also provide him with cover to comply with U.S. demands that the military transition into a low-intensity campaign in Gaza that would require less troops on the ground, involve more targeted operations, and reduce the risk of civilian casualties. The shift in tactics is backed by military commanders who worry about the stress the war puts on reservists who have been under arms for more than two months. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed today's column and podcast. The Turbulent World with James M. Dorsey depends on the support of its readers. For the past 12 years, I have maintained free distribution as a way of maximizing impact. I am determined to keep it that way. However, to avoid putting up a paywall, I need the support of a core of voluntary paid subscribers to cover the cost of producing the column and podcast. If you believe that the column and podcast add value to your understanding and that of the broader public, please consider becoming a paid subscriber. You can do so by clicking on Substack on the subscription button at www.jamesmdorsey.substack.com and choosing one of the subscription options. Thank you, season's greetings, and best wishes for the new year. Thank you.